Hi, I'm Nancy. Welcome to Mindful Yoga. Today we're going to do just a good old yoga practice using various asana or postures to stretch us and strengthen us. Take a seat on the mat. We'll begin with a little bit of breathing to bring us into this place and this moment. So finding your place could be in a chair. Allowing your knees to be a little lower than your hips. A position so that your spine can be upright. The full plenitude and juiciness of your connective tissue. Keeping you upright through the spine and throughout the body. Feeling our weight upon the earth. The gravity to which we give over and the gravity which we resist just enough to stand upright breathing the air we have been given bring your attention to the breath now allowing the air to fill your body taking the oxygen into all of the cells of the body extravagantly. The dirga breath broad at the bottom. On the inhale, allowing the ribs to expand out to the side and back and letting go. Tensions of the day of the week floating downwards giving them over to the earth. Let the inhale lengthen, lower ribs, up under the arms, a helium balloon, lightening and flowing up, letting the collarbones be wide, the slight lift. And again, tension just flowing down. Can you let tension go through the back of your neck? through the very lobes of your brain, the inner deep tissues, the nerves. Relaxing through eyebrows, under the eyes, above the lips, below the lips, tongue, and down through the root of the tongue. Down through the heart, all the organs into the pelvic bowl, allowing the earth to hold you, living in sympathy and harmony with the earth. Donna Folds writes, take all your sins and shortcomings every last mountain and molehill of your past and give them over to the waves. That's too easy, you say. But I tell you there is light hidden beneath your fear and a free spirit waiting to soar with the seagulls the moment you relinquish your tight grip on guilt or innocence. Two more long breaths, full, rounded through the lower ribs, long, up through the collarbone, wide across the shoulders, shoulder blades, tucking comfortably in and down, front lower ribs knitting down, feeling the openness of the chest, from the bottom of the ribs up through the collarbone, across the collarbone, under the arms, shoulder blades, it's just a hint of reaching towards each other, allowing the light to shine forth from the heart 
and receiving the light from all around us. And coming back to your regular breath, just observing its qualities, perhaps a little smoother, a little quieter, ready and open for both calm and movement. Bring your hands down along your sides, open the arms up, palms can be up, lifting up through the air, palms might touch overhead. Settle the shoulder blades and shoulders down as your hands are up above, wherever they are, and then turning the palms down, exhale down. Inhale up. Let the shoulders settle down. Exhale down. One more time. Let one hand stay on one side, fingertips or hand on the um, mat, other arm reaches up, become long up that side of the body, let the front ribs rest down and the tips of the shoulder blades rest down. Then bowing out through the ribs here on the side, opening through the side of the waist and the hip, keeping length through the spine, nice smooth supple spine. Other arm reaches up, and over, keeping the ribs stable, allowing them to bow out, bow out uh, on the side. Encouraging that lovely juiciness of the discs, the ligamentous material up and down the spine, the wrappings of the muscles in the back wrappings of muscles and bones all through the torso of the body, around the organs, doing everything a little bit of an opening this morning. Movement encouraging that buoyancy in the connective tissues of our bodies. I'm just beginning to stimulate nerves and muscles and bring hands down. Arms come out to the side, stretch out from the heart through the arms and the fingers and turn, mainly a torso turn from the waist up, thoracic spine. Come back through center. I'm going to remove my block so that I can crisscross my legs. So if your legs are not crisscrossed, come to that position, please. You might have a pillow under your buttocks. Bring a hand across for an easy twist as the body rotates the spine. Settle down through the shoulder blades over to the other side. And one more time on each side. Come forward on your sits bones a bit. We tend to lean back a bit, staying long through the spine as you spiral up. Come back through center. Bring the left hand over to the right thigh. I'm not mirroring you. Bring the right hand back behind the hip. Then move that left hand back behind the left hip. Thumb is down and it comes back behind and when it's back there the thumb is up. The other hand, the right hand reaches up and back and turn with thumb up inviting a stretch here through the shoulder and under the arm. 
tucking the uh, shoulder blade back there on the right in towards the spine, opening this chain of muscles that comes up across the body and encourages, uh, governs the shoulder blade to glide and at this point to come in towards the spine. Bring it down, right hand comes over to the left thigh, left hand comes back behind. Bring the right hand back behind the right hip, left arm reaches up, let the thumb come up on the left hand, press the right hip back into the right hand, opening that whole transmission of force from, in this case, the right hip up under the left arm, around to the left shoulder blade, which is tucking into the spine. And then come back, right hand goes to left thigh, uh, left hand goes to right thigh, sorry. Right hand comes back behind. Bring the left hand back behind the left hip. Right hand reaches up, perhaps the palm re, uh, is upwards towards the ceiling. You can increase this by turning the head over towards the left, completing that transmission of force from the left hip up under the right arm, tucking the shoulder blade on the right in towards the spine, and then reaching up to the occiput, the bottom of the skull. And bring it down. Right hand goes over to left thigh. Left hand comes back behind. Right hand is behind the right hip. The left hand reaches out, palm might be up. Judge your version here of this. And then head turns over towards the right. Press the right hip back into the right hand a bit. And if you would want to put the thumb up, and move that arm up and down a bit. Invitation to do so. There may be some nerve tingling. Back off a bit. Don't give it up. Come back through center. Just open the arms out, palms forward. Let there be softness in the elbows and the shoulders and wrists. Tuck in and open out. Feel that lovely opening across the collarbone, across the heart and lung area. Breathing fully. <clears throat> the whole rib cage, the whole rib basket expanding, top to bottom. <clears throat> And bring the hands down. Hands come forward, palms forward. Tuck the front ribs down and the lower tips of the shoulder blades down. Stabilize the ribs and then push forward with the hands and bring the shoulder blades back. So we're protracting and retracting, letting the shoulder blades come apart and then pulling them back together. And this should be your main focus here. The ribs are stabilized, just the shoulder blades widening out and narrowing in together. Wonderful gliding of the shoulder blades across the ribs in the back. And bring the hands down. Let's bring our feet wide, hands back behind and let the knees go side to side. Good support from the balls and heels of the hands up through the shoulders. Hips almost lifted up a little bit, perhaps. And then let one hand join in and the other come around. Just feeling some freedom throughout the whole body.
Next time you come around, full body twist. Your forehead might come down in the back of your hands or arms might be up and you're holding yourself up. Inhale back up and over. Relinquishing any tight grip on guilt, innocence, anger, regret, whatever is the molehill or mountain of your past coming into this present moment. And coming up, let's come into a lying position. Take a nice long stretch on one side, pulling that wrist up and pushing the heel down. Oh, nice sigh if you'd like. And the other side. Bring one leg up, hands behind for support, turn the ankle. Change directions. Separate the toes or unfold them and fold them back and forth. And allow that leg to come out to the side. Give some support with your hand. Perhaps your elbow is on the floor underneath it with the hand holding it. Just encouraging the hip joint to open up. Pay some attention to the other leg that is extended out flex the ankle and push out through the heel and perhaps you feel some opening through the front of the hip. Inhale the leg that's out to the side up to the top across the midline give it support if you'd like or not feeling any sensation not overanalyzing any movement just simply moving to feel and sense and be in the body freeing it up and opening it. Give a hug to that leg that's been waving around. Bring that knee over to the armpit. Give it a little pull back towards the armpit, never over straining, just within your range of motion. Bring your foot up into half a happy baby. And option here to bring the hand onto the ankle or shin area or the bottom of the foot opening up the back of the leg. <clears throat> then bringing the leg up and slowly bringing it down. Other leg comes up, give it some support, turn the ankle. Other direction. Open the toes and close them, folding and unfolding. <laughs> Leg goes out to the side. Opposite arm comes out from the shoulder. Tuck the shoulders, uh, shoulder blades in a little bit so that you can feel some width through the uh, collarbone, the extended leg. Let the heel come out to the bottom of the mat with a flexed ankle. Inhale that leg back up, across midline, give it some support if you'd like. Be aware of any sensations. Inhale back up through center, give that knee a hug. Relax down through shoulders and shoulder blades in the back of the neck, the fascia all around the skull, down over the forehead and the temples. Then bring that knee over towards the armpit, a little hug. Bring the foot up, find your half happy baby here. Invitation to 
lift up. Never overstraining, encouraging the elasticity of the connective tissue in the back of the leg along the hamstrings and the back of the calf, but respecting that plasticity as well and respecting all the joints. Bring the leg back up straight and slowly let it come down. <clears throat> Knees bend above the hips, head and shoulders rise, fingers on the outside of the skull, elbows wide, outside of the skull on each side in the back. And then one leg comes out straight and the other knee comes up towards the chest. Long and deep, giving some exercise to the psoas muscle deep within the abdomen. Option to have elbow come towards the opposite knee. A little more exercise with the little muscles that run between the vertebrae. And the last one here, let the head come down. Bring the arms along the side. Feet are four or five inches below the buttocks. We're coming into bridge. Tuck the shoulder blades in. Collarbone becomes wide. Elbows come in towards the waist. Press into the arms and the hands and the heels as the hips rise. Glutes are strong strength along the muscles of the spine and the backs of the thighs. Imagining all of the organs just softening like a baby into the cradle of your back ribs, your spine, all of your muscles in the back. And bring it down. Inhale up. This time let the arms come too into a moving bridge as the arms come up overhead and as you exhale bring the arms back around over the head towards the ceiling and then parallel with the hips and everything comes down two more times long inhale as the hips rise and arms come up long exhale as the hands retrace their journey, join the hips and come down. One last time, strong through the glutes, giving good support. Inhale, and then long exhale. Take a breath. Press the small of the back down towards the mat. Tailbone rises some, and then the tailbone pushes down as this small of the back lifts up slightly in a pelvic tilt. Employ the muscles of the pelvic floor and the lower muscles of the abdomen, transverse abdominis. Attempting not to use the hamstrings or compensate with other muscles, but to use those lower ab muscles and the pelvic floor muscles. Come back through center. Push into the heels once again and the shoulders tuck in the shoulder blades. Hands come underneath your bridge. Uh, fingers interlaced. Bring your weight onto the heels. Toes might rise slightly. Feeling the length up the shin, the engagement of the shins, the length from the knees up to the hips, long in the quadratus um, front of the thighs, long from the hips up through the collarbone, maybe widen through the collarbone a little bit, chest very open here, you can tuck in the shoulder blades and the arms under the shoulders a little bit more for three, two, and one, and bring it down. 
Bring the knees up above uh, the hips once again, bent. Arms out horizontal. Let the knees come over to one side, 45 degrees or so. Inhale, back up to middle. Exhale, over to the other side. And inhale, up. Slowly going back and forth. Feeling the pelvic floor alive. The abdominal muscles alive. Perhaps a little stretching up through the shoulders and under the arm as the legs dip down. One more time to each side. Then bring the feet down. Lift the hips and move them slightly over to the left. Lift the knees, let them come down. Then arrange the hips so they're stacked on each other and allow the torso to be in a spiral. And the head might turn as well, slightly to the back side of the twist. We're not overdoing uh, anything, just finding the right place for you. Arrange the feet, bring the knees back up, lift the hips slightly over to the right, and the knees will fall over to the left. Stack the hips and open. You might notice some opening in the shoulder, the top shoulder as well in the front. That arm could slide up a little bit, giving a little stretch to the serratus muscle underneath the arm and feeling that shoulder blade tucking into the spine. One more breath here. And let the knees come up. Take the hands, bring them around the kneecaps, circle the legs, hands on kneecaps, gentle opening to the hips and then coming around the opposite direction. Knees come back through center, feet come down. Turn over on your side. So we're lying on our side. There's a gentle V to our knees. Hand, uh, forearm is under the shoulder firmly. Bring the arm forward, open it up back just as far as is right for your shoulder. Feeling that movement coming from the muscles of the chest, the shoulder, under the arm, a whole connection of muscles moving the arm. Next time you come back, just come back to the extent where you can still feel comfortable circling your wrist and round the opposite direction. Hand comes down to the knee, bring the knee up towards the nose, slide the hand down the front of the shin and open, pulling that leg back, or perhaps if that's not comfortable, just letting the knee be straight down, encouraging an opening up along the front of the hip, the front of the body. And once again, knee towards the nose, opening up. One more time. Then bringing the head down in the crook of your arm. Top foot, the toe comes to the ankle, up to the knee. Bend the knee in front, pause for a moment. 
Well, it's really in the middle above the other knee. Point up, flex, and bring the feet together. Ankle to knee, pause in the middle. Point up, flex, and down. Two more times. Point to the knee, float in the center. Point flex and down. Bring yourself up. You might turn over. I'm going to turn to the other side and we'll do our knee to nose on the other side, starting first with the arm. So bring the arm forward, coming back to just the point that is comfortable for you. No need to overstrain here, respecting the range of movement in your own shoulder. Aware of the movement in the chest muscles movement in the shoulder blade, gliding across the back, movement underneath the arm, and of course in the shoulder itself, and even down through the arm and into the hand. And when we come back the next time, turn the wrist and round the opposite direction. Hand comes down to the top knee. Bring the knee up towards the nose, nose towards knee. They don't need to touch. Find a place where this leg can be straight down towards the knee through the hip and opening the front of the chest as well. Your hand might be pulling your ankle back. You judge your range of motion in your various joints. Two more times. Relinquishing tension in your body. Relinquishing tension in your mind as well. The challenge to let fear go. Then coming down, resting your head in the crook of your arm. Legs are straight out. Top foot, the toe comes up to the knee, bends in the middle, point, flex, and bring it down. <clears throat> Three more times. Ankle to knee, pause in the middle, point and flex, and bring it down. One last time. Let's turn over <clears throat> into a prone position, coming into Sphinx Pose. So the elbows are just behind the shoulder blades a bit, forearms giving support, fingers wide. Invitation to allow the shoulder blades to just rest down the back. Maybe wiggle the hips around a little bit, becoming a little longer through the legs and then nourishing some length from the bottom of the ribs up through the heart area. Let the eyes be on the front or just in the front of the mat or just a little bit below beyond that. Stay smooth in the spine, up through the waist, through the beautiful curves of the spine, respecting the neck that remains long in the back. Then let the chest come down, arms come along the side. Lift one leg up slightly, stretch it back and lay it back down. Other leg lifts up slightly, stretch it down and lay it down. Then uh, bring some length through the crown, long through the back of the neck, long through the spine. Head and shoulders rise, legs rise, arms rise, palms are in towards, um, pointing fingers down, toes down, palms towards the body. Two more breaths here. Kneecaps pointing down towards the earth. 
and bring it down. Bring the hands underneath the cheek and rest for a moment. Perhaps feeling the beat of the heart, the life within you. Being right here in this present moment. Bring the arms back behind, interlace the fingers at the bottom of the buttocks and come back as the front of the body rises. Bring the chest down and then pulling back through the interlaced fingers as the muscles in the back and the front bring the body up. One more time. Nurturing the muscles of both our front and back body. Bring the hands so they're underneath your thighs. Hands tucked underneath your thighs, lifting one leg for three, two, one, and the other leg, three, two, one. Push up through the hands. Sit back with hips coming back through heels. Come up onto your knees, arms rise, shoulders are still settled down towards the body. Bring the hands, fingers interlacing behind the, the uh, head. And dip the head back a little bit. Then bring the body down into puppy pose. Hands come back slightly. So they're still in front of the shoulders a bit. Chest is going to come down as one leg reaches up. Three, two, one. Come back, hips to heels. Hands come overhead. Shoulders are settled. Come up. Interlace fingers behind the head. Dip the head back, opening from the bottom of the abdomen up through the chest coming into puppy, hands come back somewhat, other leg comes up, and the opposite leg. And come up. Come up onto your knees. We're going to do gate pose. So bringing uh, one leg out, your foot can be toes up or forward, either way is fine. Straight line, good support up through the side of the body from knee up through the ear. One hand comes up and over as the other hand slides down. Keep long through both sides of the body, bowing out here in the outer ribs. So not overdoing it. And then to let that hand come down, foot might stay down or it might rise. Strong through the belly as you come back up and over. Keep long in both sides. Radiating out from the heart, all of your connective tissue, juicy and buoyant allowing you to radiate out in all directions, allowing your heart to radiate forward, bringing your light into the world. And one last time, reaching up long through the spine, bowing out through the ribs. And one last time, radiating out through fingertips, through foot, shoulder blades, especially the one on the top tucking in a bit, open through the heart, and then bringing that knee in and coming up. Bring one hand down the back of the buttocks and reach up with the other hand. Little finger reaches up, up as the bottom hand comes down towards the back of the knee eye on your thumb. Come back, hands come through the middle, 
and opposite hand from before goes down towards the back of the knee, little finger reaches up, eyes on the thumb. A kind of half camel here, back and forth. Where are you feeling the stretch, the increase in elasticity through the connective tissue, the long spine, the juiciness of the shoulder and the arm, the buoyancy in the chest muscles. One more time on each side. Notice the shoulder blade on the side where the hand is coming down towards the knee. It's tucking in. And come down. And then we'll do gait on the other side bringing your other foot out to the side, turning it forward or letting it stay up, making sure you have a nice straight line to give you good support up through your hip to your shoulders centered above the hips. Front ribs are resting down as are the tips of the lower shoulder blades. And then lifting up, letting the ribs bow out, staying long through the spine, and coming back, coming over, toe can stay down if you'd like, opening up, letting that resistance to gravity that is part of the tensile strength of our connective tissue just live through your body. Strong through the belly as you come back up, long and over. radiating out energy so freely given and exchanged. And up. Let the heart radiate out through the hands, down into the earth, out into the world and come back up. Bring your knee in and we'll come up to a standing position. Bring your feet a little wider than hip width apart. Let's rub our kidneys in the back and come down the backs of the legs and up the inner legs, around, rub once again. stimulation to the kidney meridian and the bladder meridian. Then we'll just take a, a short uh, Tai Chi twist here as we pour from one foot to the other, relaxing through the other side of the body, feeling softness through the foot as you sink down into it feeling empty on the other side of the body. And then giving some tapping to your inner shoulders, to the sides of the breast area, to the sides of the waist. To the breastbone allowing the vibrations to penetrate just as far as the body allows, respecting the body's limits, the solar plexus, the belly button, the abdomen. One hand to the front of the waist, one hand to the back of the waist and one hand to the front of the lower abdomen and the sacrum in the back. And slowly coming to a place where you can stop for just a moment and feel those vibrations, being right here in this present moment of the body.
Bring the feet a little wider apart. Toes are forward. Knees are bent a little bit over the toes. Then unbend the knees, let the hands come up behind and down in a standing squat. Arms rise as hands come down, relax everything down towards the earth and knees bend slightly. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up and exhale down. Now bring the hands out as if you were holding platters so my palms are up, shoulders are relaxed, soft through the wrists. And we're going to turn slightly to one side and then to the other, turning from the waist up. This is supposed to be good for the kidneys and the kidneys are right behind the waist. So turning right there at the waist makes sense that this is going to be good for the kidneys. Then coming back through center, turning slightly so the hands can come down. So the palms are turning and coming down around each side of the thigh and the hips go back and down a little bit, coming back up, holding your platters, turning a little bit and coming down on either side of the thigh on the other side. The kidneys are associated with the bear and bears are having a happy summer, I imagine. Plenty of good berries to eat. And perhaps we'll even spy one along our trails. One last time on each side. Let the hips come out in the back. Hands come to the side, come into mountain pose. So now feet are directly under hips. Rest down through the ribs and the shoulder blades so that the rib basket itself is right over the hips. Shoulders centered over the rib basket and the hips. Just swing the arms. Are they swinging freely? Inhale up overhead, exhale down, hands come to the shins, long through the spine and the connective tissue around the spine. And then bend the knees, drape the body down, come up into chair, hips remain back, finding your place here. Inhale up, exhale, hips back. Inhale up, make sure the shoulders are not hiking up, relax down, resting down through the front ribs and the shoulder blades. One last time, come up, come back down, arms come back, hips rise slightly back and forth a few times. If you're skiing down the hill, And then bring the hands together, fountain up, reach out to the sides and relax everything as you come down, letting tension and past sins go down into the earth, cross the wrists, reach up, open out, relax, soften, letting there be space through the cells, between the cells. Effort your way up and then let the tension go from head, face, shoulders, down through the rib basket. Relaxing down through the belly, letting the pelvic bowl 
easily bear the weight of the head and the heart as it is held in the embrace of the earth. Last time, everything melting down and just resting for a moment, feeling your fingertips heavy, shoulders heavy, the pelvic floor coming up through the diaphragm and the root of the tongue, centered, hydrated, elongated through the connective tissue. Then we'll do triangle before we end here. So coming into triangle pose, one foot back, one forward. And we're going to be very cognizant of bringing the ribs, allowing them to bow out and not making too much of a hinge at the back between our lumbar spine and um, the thoracic spine. So in the back of the waist, not making a hinge there. Hips come back and forward. That front leg is uh, straight. Hips come back, open up through the chest, reach towards the horizon, and then staying long through the spine, bring the arm up and over to the extent that works for you, letting the ribs bow up, staying long in the underside, longer perhaps than you have in the past. One arm in this pose usually comes straight up and one arm down, opening through the chest and inhale up. One more time, reaching out to the horizon, windmilling, staying long through the spine, bowing out through the ribs. And come back up. Bring the hands in, turn the legs for triangle on the other side. The front, uh, the feet in the front, foot, the toes are towards the front of the mat and the other one at about 35 degrees, but adjust that as you need to for your hip. Bring the hips back and forward, back and forward, coming to the back, opening through the chest, reaching out, windmilling, cognizant of the length of the spine, the buoyancy of the discs, of the wrappings around the muscles, ribs, bowing out here, some length in the underside as well. So not such an extreme triangle this time. Inhale back up. Bring the hands in once again, opening, reaching out to the horizon and windmilling long through the spine. One more breath here and bring it up hands come down to the side let's end our time together here a little rainbow dance feet come wide arms come out to the side with palms up imagine that you're holding a rainbow maybe even bouncing it the ends of it back and forth between your hands the beautiful colors illuminated above you relinquishing all innocence and guilt, simply being part of this moment, soaring like a seagull. One more time to each side. And come back through middle. Bring the feet under the hips, hands come to heart center. Let's end with an OM. Inhale fully. OM. Namaste. Thank you for your practice, your discipline, your compassion for yourself and your compassion that goes out to the world. Be well.